Not too long ago, I made a video where I talked about the many rumors and leaks surrounding Coffee Lake, Intel's eighth generation desktop processors, because they were supposed to be arriving imminently. In that video, I examined the then supposed specs, poured over a few very interesting leaked benchmark scores, and quickly came to the conclusion that Coffee Lake seems kind of stupid. But was I too quick to judge? While I was telling everyone to take the leaks with tons of salt, did I forget to drink my own League of Legends tears? Does Coffee Lake really feel as out of place in the current CPU market as I expected it would? Will I ever stop speaking in questions? The answer to that last question is a simple yes. Yes, I will. The answers to the rest are a little bit more complicated, but more on that in a bit. After I released my video, Intel finally officially revealed its Coffee Lake lineup, confirming that they are indeed introducing higher core and thread counts to their mainstream desktop CPU family. At the lower end of the list are two core i3s, the 8100 and 8350K. Both chips are decked out with four physical cores without hyper-threading, six megabytes of cache, and include native support for DDR4 2400 MHz memory. The i3-8100 boasts a clock speed of 3.6 GHz, has a TDP of 65 watts, and is expected to cost around $177. The i3-8350K is an overclockable chip that runs a little faster at a base clock speed of 4 GHz, sports a 91 watt TDP, and costs a fair bit more at $168. While these chips will undoubtedly be exciting to many budget consumers looking to stick with the blue team, they're far from Coffee Lake's most interesting addition, since they're basically replacement i5s from Kaby Lake. But moving higher up the ladder, we're greeted by the two new Core i5 chips, the i5-8400 and i5-8600K. Both come equipped with six, yes six, physical cores, but unfortunately, hyper-threading is again nowhere to be seen. They also feature nine megabytes of cache and natively support DDR4-2666 memory. The i5-8400 has a base clock of only 2.8 GHz, boostable to 4 GHz, has a TDP of 65 watts, and will cost you $182. The i5-8600K comes in at a much more respectable base clock of 3.6 GHz, boostable to 4.3 and beyond, thanks to overclocking, runs at a maximum TDP of 95 watts, and will cost around $257. Six cores on a mainstream Intel processor has never happened before, and it's undoubtedly a terrific step in the right direction, but in a market that also includes AMD's Ryzen, the lack of hyper-threading is a real bummer on the i5s. Speaking of hyper-threading, Intel has been saving that little feature for their highest-end chips, the Core i7. Both the Core i7-8700 and 8700K will ship with six cores and 12 threads and are packed with a solid 12 megabytes of cache and natively support 2666 megahertz memory. The 8700 features a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz, which can be pushed to 4.6 thanks to Turbo Boost 2.0, has a TDP of 65 watts and will come in at $303. The overclockable 8700K starts off with a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz, boostable to 4.7, has a TDP of 95 watts just like the the other K chips, which is four watts higher than the previous generations, and will set you back $359. All of these 8th gen chips sound great on paper, and seem to be the kick in the rear that Intel's mainstream desktop processor family has been sorely needing. But do these much improved specs translate into similarly improved real world performance? Well, I've been playing around with Coffee Lake's overclockable i5-8600K on MSI Z370 Crate Gaming motherboard for the last week or so, and the short answer is a resounding yes. When pitting the 8600K against its Kaby Lake counterpart, the 7600K, it becomes clear that Intel isn't content with minor incremental upgrades anymore. Thanks, AMD. As you'd expect from a chip that has two more cores at its disposal, the 8600K scored much higher than the four-core 7600K in every multi-core synthetic benchmark I ran, and by no small margin. The 8600K scored between 24 to 48% higher than the older 7600K, and it did this without breaking a sweat with temps maxing out at just 73 degrees, compared to the 7600K's toasty 77. Single core tests tell a different story, however. Even with the 8600K's 100 megahertz boost clock advantage, it and the 7600K's single core performance were nearly indistinguishable. Heck, the 7600K even took the lead in some of the tests, but the difference was usually within the margin of error territory. This trend sort of continues when it comes to gaming, as both processors perform about equally well at 1080p with the highest graphical quality settings and low MSAA, barring a few exceptions. Less CPU-bound games like Ghost Recon Wildlands and Metro showed almost no difference in performance, while the more CPU-intensive Ashes of the Singularity much preferred the 8600K's additional cores. 
Yes, if I had picked up at 7600K in the past month or so, I'd be fuming right now. The 8600K makes its older counterpart completely obsolete in all areas, and it's not even 10 months old. The only reason I can see anyone picking up the 7600K is for its slightly lower price, which is about $40 cheaper than the 8600K. While not insignificant enough to not be taken into account, I can't help but feel the $40 price bump is actually well worth it. But hey, the new Core i5 being better than the older one isn't really a shocking revelation. What is, however, is that it even gives KB Lake's top-end i7 a run for its money. Actually, no. Scratch that. It absolutely trounces it in almost every single way. Except in single-core performance, obviously. The 7700K's 200MHz higher stock clock speed is still a thing, after all. In multi-threaded performance, the 7700K puts in a valiant effort, almost matching and even beating the 8600K in a number of tests, but more threads aren't nearly as good as more physical cores, and the 8600K still takes the overall win. Now, as you know, I've repeatedly touted the 7700K as the best possible CPU you can buy for gaming, and that held true for a long time, 10 months or so, so when I decided to see how well it would game compared to the 8600K, I was kind of expecting to sing its praises yet again. But it became hard to do that, seeing as the 8600K outperformed the old Gaming King in about half of the games I tested, and in games where the 7700K came out on top, it was rarely by more than 1 or 2 FPS. If you've been paying attention, all of that means that the mid-range $257 i5-8600K performs as well, and more often than not, better than the high-end $309 i7-7700K. While we're on the topic of Intel making its own, still relatively new chips, essentially irrelevant to the mainstream consumer with the launch of Coffee Lake, let's have a look at a certain other 6-core Intel processor. Since I don't currently have access to the 6-core 12-thread Coffee Lake i7-8700K, I threw the i5-8600K into the ring with the beastly, enthusiast-grade i7-7800X just for fun. With double the threads, the Core i7-7800X would surely make short work of the 8600K. And it does just that, in most core-hungry synthetic benchmarks anyway. Gaming results were mostly too close to choose an overall winner. But I figured I'd make this matchup even more interesting, disabling hyper-threading on the 7800X, and the results were very revealing. With both chips running on 6 cores at stock speeds, the 8600K comes out as the clear winner in all but one or two tests. It even takes the win in every single game I tested. That's a phenomenal result, no matter how you slice it. Now I know effectively neutering the 7800X to make its fight against the 8600K a little fairer isn't, you know, fair, especially since the 7800X is based on Skylake architecture, but considering that the Coffee Lake i7-8700K is also a 6-core 12-thread chip that runs at higher clock speeds and comes with more cash than the 8600K, there's little reason to think that I'll have much trouble leaving the 7800X in the dirt. Beyond the 7800X's additional PCI Express lanes and your ability to use VROC... <laughs> Sorry. Besides those two things, there's not much else that it has to offer over the 8700K, especially not if Intel holds firm on the 7800X's price point of around $380. That's kind of the prevailing theme throughout this whole shebang. Coffee Lake is a more than worthy successor to KB Lake, but its launch feels rushed, especially to those of us who recently upgraded to a 7700K or any other mainstream 7th gen chip. What dampens the Coffee Lake hype even more though is its incompatibility with anything earlier than 300 series motherboards, and trust me I tried, meaning that no matter what, if you're planning to adopt a Coffee Lake chip, you'll have to shell out even more cash for a new motherboard too. This fact becomes even more troubling once you consider that Intel's next planned launch is the 10 nanometer chips in 2018, which are rumored to require an entirely new motherboard for them as well. This is something that AMD Ryzen owners don't have to worry too much about, seeing as the company expects socket AM4 to last well into 2020. That extremely natural seg brings us to the question of whether Coffee Lake, with its improved core and thread counts, in any way affects Ryzen's relevance in the current mainstream CPU market. It's another short answer. Nope. Not a, nah. AMD's Ryzen processors still stand out as the most value-packed option to any consumers who use their systems for more than just gaming. The mid-range R5-1600 has the same core and thread count as Coffee Lake's most pricey offering, and comes in at a whopping $145 cheaper. It's even cheaper than the i5-8600K while giving consumers double the thread count. Coffee Lake's core clock speed advantage is far less impressive to super multitaskers and content creators than more cores and threads, so let's not even get into the Ryzen 7 1700, which you can get for about the same price. 
Now, as we're approaching the end of this video, I need to point out that I'm actually really liking Coffee Lake right now, even though I may not be speaking that way. It seems like a fantastic line of CPUs that excels at gaming as well as medium level multitasking, and all of that at a relatively small price premium over Kaby Lake. The 8600K is a particularly great value considering it's the best CPU for gaming I've seen since the 7700K, since I couldn't get my hand on the 8700K, but I don't think those six threads are really gonna help it too much. Anyways, unfortunately, Coffee Lake feels like too little too late in a post-Ryzen world. And with its lack of compatibility with older and possibly near future chipsets, only 16 directly CPU connected PCI Express lanes with 24 others sharing a DMI 3.0 connection and no quad channel memory support, it might be a little hard to justify the upgrade for some. I mentioned this in my rumor analysis video, but it just feels like Intel isn't focusing on the consumer here. They've made tremendous improvements in areas that AMD was pressuring them on, cores and threads, but then they go and pull off proprietary nonsense by forcing a 300 series motherboard upgrade. But let me not look at it from the perspective of somebody who recently upgraded, but rather from one who's actually been holding out. Let's say you're still rocking an i5-2600K or an i7-2700K, because honestly, Sandy Bridge was the last time it was worth upgrading for most users. If you're still on 2000 series, then Coffee Lake is a tremendous upgrade for you. You'll see great gains in IPC, but then also get better multi-core performance, all while maintaining that Intel reliability. Coffee Lake should be the best set of mainstream processors out on the market right now if you're looking for the fastest chips. And the short lifespan of 300 series motherboards shouldn't concern you at all since you're apparently the type of person who can outlast the masses and hold on to your hardware for more than a year at a time. Oh, what it is to not be afflicted by CUD. Anyways, the same old story remains. Intel has the fastest chips on the market, and AMD has the best value CPUs out there. Both have their market segment clearly defined. It just took Intel nine months to finally pull some more cores out of its high knee and beat AMD in the higher thread count setups. What do you all think of Intel's new Coffee Lake lineup? I'm sure you've also watched other reviewers' thoughts on this so far. Are they worth upgrading for you? Which of the chips do you actually think is the most appealing? Let's chat about that in the comments down below or over on Twitter, I'm at UF Disciple. Big thanks to MSI South Africa for hooking us up with the Z370 Crate Gaming and the i5-8600K for all of our testing. Couldn't have done it without you guys. Big thanks to you all for watching this video. Be sure to hit that like button down below if you enjoyed it. Smash it if you really wanna. Subscribe to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I am Brett with the UF Disciple channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video because we've got a, quite a few Coffee Lake videos coming up. Anyways, cheers. What's another night all alone when you're spending every day on your own and here it goes. <laughs>